Hey guys, how you doing? It's Hex. Hello there. Um, yeah, pop filter keeps falling. I God, I hate pop filters, but people apparently said I need a pop filter, so I bought one. Anyway, we're here to talk about Satellite Repair Man, which is the game made entirely using open source stuff. Uh, the developer's actually very active on Reddit, and he's even said in here on Reddit, all my games support Linux. Actually, Linux is my main OS. I do my development in Linux. Yay. Uh, that was a little clap, but I'm frightened of knocking my pop filter and having it fall, so I'm trying not to touch that, uh, which might mean I hit my mic less, who knows. Uh, he also said, uh, specifically in another Reddit post, which I actually can't find because I suck at searching, that Satellite Repair Man was built completely using open source stuff, um, which is good. I like I like this. Uh, this is good. For anyone who doesn't know, the Godot engine is a open... Oh, see, it's hard to explain now. Think, you know guys know what Unity is, right? It's kind of like open source Unity. It's not really, but that's like the easiest way to explain it. It's a game engine, multi-platform game engine, and it's entire sort of thing you can use to build a game and then release on multiple platforms. Yeah, been explained that badly. Satellite Repairman itself, though, is where we in fact where's the Steam page? There's the Steam page. It's priced at two pounds ninety nine, which is very modest, very reasonable. Uh, it's got an interesting art style, if not particularly high fidelity. It's got an interesting art style with this small world thing where you've got a little planet you defend each mission, which is cool. And it's got some waves, uh, some survival thing where you just defeat wave after wave. Um, generally, uh, an interesting idea. I'm not a fan of the implementation of the idea. I think the implementation is a little bit of work, but saying that, it's pretty cool. It's the guy's, I think the guy's third game, uh, Nuno Donut, Donut, Don, Donut, yeah, I butchered that, I'm not going to bother trying anymore. Um, game of Changes is the other game he released, and then before that, this Autumn thing, which is an experience type thing, I think. But yeah, this other game that's cool as well, so again, all made in open source by the looks of it, from what I can tell. Uh, the guy's obviously a Linux advocate and a Linux user, which is what we want, so yeah. Uh, but let's have a look at the actual game. Now, the game has requires very modest, uh, again, 4 gigabyte of RAM, i5, uh, dedicated GPU, which seems fine. And there are 11 positive reviews and one negative. Uh, the most played, I think, is 3 hours 1. Yeah, 3 hours 10 is the most played. Um, and, yeah, the one, the guy gave it a down and said the game's not fun. There's not much strategy involved. Uh, you can barely... Uh, any time at all do for I don't even know what that sentence was supposed to say so let's let's move on but you didn't like it anyway uh, this is the game I'm going to show you uh, War Sim which is the second tutorial which I just think is a good example of the game being played I haven't got that far as you can see I'm only on the fourth one but number three seems like the way to go okay two minutes 28 because the missile launches in two minutes 28 this is the world we're on. This is our little world, and we've got to defend this from satellites, uh, from satellites, from missiles from space. And we do that by putting satellites in orbit that warn us when things go wrong. So we'll do that. We will uh, use this to order a factory. There you go. Wait, wait, we do this to order a factory. There you go. Now I've done it properly. That's good. And the factory's ready in uh, a few seconds, 40, 50, here you go, just, we can wander around, we can pace back and forth while we're waiting to make it look tense. <sighs> okay, uh, yay, okay, uh, and then we can throw that down, and then we'll use this to order a satellite, and we also, while we're there, we need a, ra a com, we need a radar, and we need a GPS. So that's all queued up. You see the queue there? Now, that pops up when you go near the building and magically goes away when you go away. I like that as well. And that's cool implementation. Interesting way of doing it. Very, very, very functional. Like it. And then we there's our satellite done. And we're how long before we have 40% towards our com. So we can just do all this in one hit. I've done this, I've done this a couple of times now. I'm getting good at it. Com, okay. And we also need radar and GPS. So there's our radar at 50%. We'll keep pacing. Make it look tense. Uh, come on, come on, W. you. Yep, there you go. And last bit is GPS. 50%. Oh, got to keep pacing. Got to keep pacing to go faster. Come on, yay. And then we got to go to an altitude of 1,000 in order to, uh, an altitude of 1,000 in order to deploy our satellite. So I'm going to deploy it directly above defense because that makes sense to me. So we go up. Uh, the higher up we go, the theory is the higher, oh, we're out of range there for communication. So we need to lower ourselves. See so the top right there, you've got the red dots, which means we're out of communication range. So there's a communication range and GPS range, it's just over a thousand. So we can push one and then push E to deploy our satellite. And then we can push delicately, delicately, we can push Q to dock. And then we can go 2E, 3E, 4E, and make sure it's repaired with W. Then we can hit Q to undock. 
That's it. That's this actually. That's actually this uh, tutorial complete. That's the fastest way of putting a satellite in orbit. And then hopefully it will land. And then you'll see in four, three, two, one, and the missile will be launched. There's a satellite we can see in orbit there. Look, this is a little satellite. Yeah, there you go. And we can see the missiles coming. Oh no! And is that is it gonna is it gonna work? Is that satellite gonna detect it and then shoot? There you go. The defense is a shot, and the missile shot down. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty awesome. Mission complete. Uh, the idea is is very good. The idea of just defending this planet by keeping things in good repair, I like. I do find the implementation a little janky. Um, and also right here on this screen, it says press B or zero to continue. That's supposed to be B or O, so Xbox or PlayStation pad. It's actually escape we need to press, which is just a polished thing. But if I do the war sim again this time, and this time let's uh, not worry about failing, let's just have a look at some items. So we pop up here, and this is our entire planet, so we can fly around the planet. And in the later mission, there's houses you have to defend, which is again fine. Let's uh, let's hit now. It's Q to interact with this, and then up and down to select stuff. So I want to just select a factory, and I hit E for a factory. So it says press dock to place orders, but it doesn't actually tell you at any point in the tutorial what the dock button is, which is why I had to find myself going out of here, go into controls, and then reading all the controls. Not ridiculous. This is the sort of thing that happens in games, and it's not the end of the world if you can't find it. Uh, and then we hit 1, and then we hit E then to deploy. So again, that's two separate buttons. So we've got Q and E to interact with buildings. I don't really understand why it can't just be like one button, but I suppose that's because then you couldn't eat food and, and select other stuff. So Q to interact, and then we're going to go satellites. I hit enter naturally, hit enter, because that's the habit. But I have to hit E to use that, and hit E again to order the satellite. So then I've got to hit Q, and go down to modules, and hit E. And then I've got to order a com with E. And then I want the next thing down the list. So instead of putting it back on the list, it throws it back to the main menu. So Q, E, E. Q, E, E. So that's how I queued up. So every time I've got to the whole menu. And I actually kind of find that annoying because there's no reason for it to drop you out. If you think of Q as back and E as forward, then you kind of that's how you get to the menu. So it's like Q to turn it on, then E to go forward and Q to go back. That works fine. Um, which is kind of what it's saying on the dock there as well. Works fine, absolutely fine as that, but the way I have to go through the whole menu each time, especially on a game that's obsessed with time, it seems like time sensitive, constantly get the satellites in orbit before the missiles launched, um, then that's kind of kind of annoying. So we've got that now. I mean, you know what, I actually think I might be able to do this as well. So we go up to 1,000, so I'm using the arrow keys to do that. I've gone up too high, so I've got to lower it a little bit. 28 seconds, this could, this might, maybe this can be done. See that? That's. I'll oh, see. I'm at the range of the satellite now. That means I've got to go back closer to the tower, I think, and I've got to get to my minimum height of a thousand to launch the satellite. There you go. So that's uh, E, E, and then it's Q. Ah, Q. Ah, no, no, can't dock here. I've got eight seconds. I'm never going to do this. Uh, two E, three E, four, four E. There you go. Maybe I can. There you go. Done. Um, that's one satellite. Now, in the later mission, I have tried and failed it. Uh, you go through and you have you have less time and you constantly have to do something and a missile hits repair and it's just a little bit of a looping game thing. And that's that's basically the core of it. The strategy is just timing. It's getting really good at putting these pushing these buttons on time. I did that. I'm quite proud of myself there while talking. Hey, three star, cool. Um Yeah, you can see in fact I'll show you I'll show you the second wave. Well, so it's the same again, all the same game loop again, only this time you have to uh, this time you have to defend these houses. Which are over here somewhere. Where are they? No, that's that's the research building, the research technology. So at the same time, there's a house. There's a little house, look. It's just a little house. Can't interact with them. They're just houses. But it's still quite cool that that's, what, that's the thing you're protecting is the people, which I kind of like. There's no radar dish, so I have to go and create a dish and stuff and put my satellite in orbit. Uh, yeah, I failed it because I screwed up and I ordered like... I managed to order like 10 of the same module and then I got confused and I couldn't figure out to cancel. So yeah. So we can research satellite category B, which has got better range and stuff. And you're doing that uh, while managing the waves that are coming in. So it's it's nice enough, the idea. I'm afraid that I just feel it needs a little bit of polish with those menus because they seem really chorish to me and a constant memorizing the button presses rather than being good at the game. And it does, at the moment from what I've seen, and bear in mind I've not played loads of it because, as you know, my videos are always early looks. I'm struck that there doesn't seem like that much actual strategy involved or tactics. It's just get really good at putting the satellites up there. 
There doesn't seem to be a lot past that. Maybe I'm wrong, and as I go through the game, I'll find more. And I do like the art. I, I think the art's it's it's like I say, simple but quite effective. Like those, like the character and the backgrounds. They're like they're fairly static. They're fairly easy to animate, straightforward stuff. Um, and I love it, but I think that's obviously hand drawn. It's, really, it's done really nicely. I like it. I think it looks nice. So I've got no criticisms art wise. It's just polish. It's all polish. Um, yeah, I, like, I kind of like the simplicity of the art, and I think the simplicity of the way the buildings pop up and stuff is probably uh, is probably a good thing because that means that you you're not you're not wasting time looking at the pretty anime. You're just like boom, there's a building. Boom, there's a building. Kind of reminds me oddly, uh, you know the Steam World games. It kind of got. It kind of reminds me of that, like 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 straightforward two D, interesting but not like blow you away pretty just serviceable graphics and i mean that in a good way but i'm babbling now and i'm saying like i'm insulting the graphics i'm really not i like them i like i like the simplicity of it and the, the, the sort of the structures are like just boxes with wires on and stuff but they're all obviously that's a headquarters and when you've seen it you can see it's a headquarters where like that rocket ship looking thing is a communication tower but once you've seen one you go okay i know what that is easily you know serviceable graphics very nicely done um, but it's just that, and I could play this happily, but it's that polish of that, that, that constant button messing of like go, like menu, 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 menu stuff. And the fact that even like I'm going to fail this now, let's see what happens when we fail this. Come on, fail it, damn it, four seconds. Just pace it again, pace it again. And the fact like, there we go, wave one, oh, it's, it's now we've got two minutes 43. But anyway, when it says like press B or circle, to exit out but doesn't ex like doesn't pick up the keyboard controls it's it's little things and doesn't tell you which button is interact and doesn't tell you which button is use deploy um i find it annoying a little a little annoying um and also apparently i can hit r i've just noticed in the menu there i can hit r don't know what that does uh alt set health alt angle end of right okay so i can hit r didn't tell me about that tutorial maybe that's the next tutorial who knows but yeah, all in all, I think if you looked at this and you thought, that looks kind of fun, for the fairly modest price tag, I'd say it's definitely worth picking up, and I'm happy to support a developer who uses open source stuff and is proud of that fact, and he's telling people I've read it. That's pretty cool. But unfortunately, this game isn't for me as it stands. I just feel like I need more in every direction, you know? But uh, thank you to the guy, anyway, to the to the gentleman who makes this game, because it's nice to see. He's the first, as far as I can recall, he's the first developer who's like, yeah, we're pro Linux. I use Linux, fuck you. You know, just like, really sort of like, you know, no no shame there. No no shame. Not trying to bash away from the subject. He develops on Linux. That's how he does his work. Great. You know, that, that seems to be how it is. So, yeah, and apparently I can't fail this mission now, which is just, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I've been HexDSL, and this has been Satellite Repair Man. A game that I... I oh, they exit, enter again. A game that I kind of just had high hopes for, I'm afraid. Um, but yes, doesn't mean because I didn't enjoy it, doesn't mean you won't. And again, I want the guy to succeed because Linux. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.